Candles. I'm standing in the dry Beaver Creek of Rim Rock, Arizona, which gives us a fantastic terrain for testing out the sandals. Um, so you may know that there's a big thing with minimalist footwear and barefoot shoes, and there's a lot of different kinds, new ones coming out all the time. There's a lot of advantages to wearing minimalist footwear because um, they help your posture by having no heel on them. They let your foot muscles build up and give you better foot strength and dexterity. And uh, in some cases, they connect you to the earth. So these particular shoes are the Earthrunner model of barefoot sandal and they have several Earthrunner has several models of sandal and I've had these ones which are the circadian model for about six months now and I wear them every day pretty much if I wear shoes at all I wear these ones so well into the winter which as you can see is not that cold out I wear them. I wear them about down into 50 degrees. I still wear my sandals, but if it starts to get rainy, then I might put on my shoes. Um, but I've only worn my shoes since I bought these sandals. I've only worn shoes about maybe five times. And I really resent putting on my shoes. I just feel like, ugh, I hate these big clunky pillow pillows on my feet. They feel really constricting now that I've experienced the freedom of the barefoot sandal. So I'm going to go into some specific features of these sandals. Okay, so I said I would talk about the specific features of this shoe. This is, uh, I believe it's called the circadian model. <laughs> and uh, uh, the features of this model are, it doesn't have a very thick footbed. I think it's one of the thinner or thinnest footbeds. I might be wrong about that, but you can go to Earth Runners and look, look at what they have. Um, these ones have a, you have the option of getting a leather footbed or just the Vibram sole or however you say that. Um, and, uh, so mine have a leather footbed, but I'll have to tell you about that is I got the other one first and then um, I did not get the, you can get them custom fit and I didn't get the custom fit ones first and I tried them on and I felt like my feet are pretty narrow and so they were a little bit too fat for my feet. I felt kind of stupid. So I returned those and I did the foot tracing to get the custom ones, which is only like $20 more or something like that. And I felt like that was worth it because now they really fit my feet perfectly. And uh, I also, when I got the first pair, they were very stinky and I have multiple chemical sensitivity and the footbed was very um, toxic for me. And I told the manufacturer about that and they said, oh, well, if you put this leather foot bed on top of that, it will, it will cover up the stench a little bit. So that's what I did. But I think that if you have that problem, you could also just let them air out for a while. And, uh, <laughs> so this is a fun project standing on one leg to show off my shoes because it's, uh, exercise and filming at the same time. So um, these have an adjustable strap system that is meant to be like a flip-flop that stays on your foot for running, like the famous Terra Humera tire sandals for barefoot running, barefoot running. And um, so the strap system goes underneath the bottom in some places and you can adjust it all to fit your foot and you think when you step on the straps there's two right here you can see don't they don't they wear off and well um they're pretty tough mine have to certainly show no signs of wearing through in six months of 
use on rugged terrain and asphalt as well and sidewalks. Um, and I believe that you can actually have your laces replaced if you want to for a lesser price than buying a new pair of shoes. So you don't really have to worry about that as far as I can tell. One very special feature of this particular sandal is this copper plug in the middle is uh, for grounding. So grounding or earthing. So you may know that um, there's electrons in the earth and when you're grounded you're connected to that source of electrons so the theory is that it's uh, natural and important to be connected to the earth because we've evolved to stand and sit and sleep on the earth and that it's healthy um, to not have these various charges built up on your body from uh, your movements or the electrical wiring around you, power lines and things. So that's what the grounding plug is for and it's connected to the lacing which is silver threaded lacing. And uh, when I first bought these shoes I did indeed use a special kind of voltmeter that tells you if you are grounded or not and uh, it's got a special measurements for humans because the voltage is very low for a human but um, it seemed to work it seemed like it definitely worked and uh, I could uh, go next to my house and touch it where I would normally see a larger voltage on my body and I would see zero because it was connected to the ground in these shoes so I haven't tested them since they got dirty. I'm curious if the conductive silver lacing loses its conductivity when it gets all dirty like this because I know with the grounding sheets they tell you to wash them like every week or two because of the oils on your body. But I don't have that meter anymore so I couldn't tell you if they're still grounding but the shoes have many features besides grounding if you don't believe in that or you just uh, don't care about that. And the plugs re really don't cause any problem. So, um, what else? I felt like the uh, leather footbed, I wasn't sure what would happen with that because I have very sweaty feet and I wasn't sure if it would be better to have the footbed to absorb the sweat or if the footbed would get real stinky. And I could say that it has been stinky at times, but it seems like I've been able to wash off the stink of the leather, leather foot fungus bacteria kind of weird vinegar smell. So it's not stinking anymore at this point. Um, it often gets, I haven't tried the non-leather one, so I can't really compare. Mine often get dirt stuck underneath my footprint which sometimes builds up so so much that it's like walking on an acupuncture mat or something and um, what else so a lot of people wonder if uh, the foot the foot straps are gonna give them blisters or anything and that was not not my experience it took very few days I wore the straps loose at first and that took very few days for me to feel comfortable tightening the straps all the way and I never got any chafing or blisters so that was not an issue. Um, some people wonder if they're gonna stub their toes or I don't, that was not, it's not an issue for me. I rarely stub my toes but if I did I think that could happen in any kind of sandals. Um, uh, one problem I have is that the fit is so close that sometimes my heel hangs off the back and I can feel the edge of the the uh, sandal underneath my heel and I have to tighten it a little bit so that my foot goes forward. Um, especially when I'm driving and my foot is angled, the other foot is angled on the 
gas pedal I can feel it and so I'll take off my shoes to drive because I don't like it feeling it hanging off there um, overall the biggest complaint that people have about these sandals is that stones get stuck inside them when you're running and walking in this kind of terrain sandy sort of loose terrain stones will flip up underneath your foot and they're hard to get out you kind of have to flip them out by hand uh, that is a problem but I just it's worth it to me to be able to wear this shoe so I just kind of have a habit of flip it, flipping them out if they get in there or shaking my foot out like this a little bit um, so that is the deal with that these shoes are made in Northern California they're uh, small small company um they cost around i just want to say like 60 to maybe 90 dollars if you get all the features and custom shoes <coughs> at the time that i bought them here i am in another environment just to show you how well the sandals conform to walking over these rocks um they really don't slip my feet don't slip off them at all in this dry climate, but what happens that is a problem is if you get the shoe wet, like crossing a stream or stepping in a puddle, then they really start to slip and this, this leather footbed gets all slimy and it's really hard to walk in them. So I uh, do not recommend stream crossing in them. I would take them off probably and put them back on. Um, but if you don't get the leather foot bed, it may dry off a lot quicker. I'm not sure about that. So another thing that I wanted to add to my commentary is that I talked about breaking in the straps, which was really no problem. Another factor is breaking in the sandal so that it starts to conform to your foot and your foot stays on it better. It gets this nice scoopy sort of thing going on curves around your foot that will take a little bit longer maybe a week or so for it to start to curve around your foot but the third thing you have to be aware of when breaking in is training your feet to go shoeless or minimal shoes so you're